Well, hello, hello, hello. It's Vegas Pauly C. And I was just talking to Mona, who was the first person who ever sent me a video of my shoes. And, you know, they kind of were making fun of them, calling them dad shoes. And, you know, it was entertainment. It was the first time I was ever noticed in social media. So I always refer back to Mona. And, you know, she sent me some stuff that was posted. And I realized in talking to Mona just now for just, you know, a minute or two, that this is really the story of what's going on in America. You have Karens, like the dinosaur, who are anti-fun, anti-free speech, um, anti-entertainment if it's offensive to them, uh, such as the use of the word Indian, you know, which was a mistake, I guess, on my part. Because like I said, I grew up with the Cleveland Indians and Indian casinos and Indian this and Indian that. And I just kind of remember back in my relationship with her, some of the things that went on. <clears throat> and she indicated to me very early uh, that, you know, she had animus or, you know, disgust towards the white man. You know, she, she said things like rich white men. She would use that term to talk about the high rollers that go to Vegas rich white men will always continue to go to Vegas. And at the time I'm like, I mean, I'm not rich, I'm fake rich. I have some assets, I'm quickly running through them. But at the time I'm thinking to myself, girlfriend, like, what are you talking about? You're a white girl, you know? And I knew right away, you know, the whole thing with the Treasure Island, how she never acknowledges the Treasure Island because Phil Ruffin has a relationship with Trump, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not, I'm not here to do politics. I'm just here to remember some of the things she said to me. The fact that she goes into the Luxor and finds it culturally inappropriate, somehow it's offensive to Egyptians. It's just this anti-fun, anti-humor zeitgeist. You know, a lot of comedians will not perform on college campuses these days because they, you know, they can't say anything. Anything they say, they're in big trouble. You know, you don't even know where the, the minefields are, really. Um, and I'm out in Vegas trying to have fun. And I don't feel the need to hurt anybody. I'm not a misogynist. I'm not anti-woman. I love my mother. My mother was the genius, the, the creator. Um, she built everything. My father was the fool. When you come from a family where the mother is solid and the father is the fool, you know, you grow up, you know, with a high opinion of women. I never even got angry about the fact that no women wanted me. I just knew that, you know, I was not a good looking guy. I knew that I was, you know, unusual looking. You can see I'm, I'm, I'm a strange looking guy. And I also was obese and had yellow teeth. I wasn't helping my cause. It never made me angry. It just sent me back to my own world, my introverted world of, you know, reading and gambling and um, studying things that I found interesting, you know, geography, um, business, gambling, obviously. And I'm okay with that. And, you know, I pretty much had every intention of spending the rest of my life alone, but someone saw me from more than what I look like. And I have been in a six and a half year relationship with her. And, you know, I think you guys know, by the way I talk about her, the way, by the way I honor her, and obviously I'm talking about Mahi, um, that I'm very much in love and I, and I feel very blessed. Uh, and for her to put these accusations out there about misogyny, like, I don't even know what this woman's talking about. But isn't this the Karen playbook? You know, just start the nonsense with me using the word Indian tribe instead of tribal property and accusing me of misogyny for no reason. And I remember one time I called uh, little Mahi Pocahontas, you know, to, unfortunately, I did it to a Karen. Uh-oh, I'm in big trouble. And this is what I got back. Don't you know? that Pocahontas was taken to England and she was very much abused by the white man. She was not treated nicely, you know. She was over there 
Uh, and they were mean to her. And I wish I had the text, you know, but I don't save every damn thing the way that she does. And I'm just like, whoa, pump the brakes, girlfriend. It's a term of endearment. My girlfriend looks a little bit like Pocahontas to me. Um, and I think she's so hot. I think she's so cool, you know? The funny part about this whole thing is, is that I love ethnic women. I've only dated ethnic women. My girlfriend has deep, dark, beautiful brown skin that I can't live without. It nourishes me. It feeds me. Look at me. Look at me. I look like I died three weeks ago. Do you think that I'm not aware that I look like I died three weeks ago, that I have no color in my skin? I ran into a homeless guy in uh, downtown Las Vegas. Some of you may have seen it on the live. And um, all he wanted was to do was to hold me, you know? And the reason I tell you that is because my hand intertwined with his hand. Now, this guy was homeless. He was an alcoholic. Um, you know, I could smell the alcohol. And he was a poor thing. And he was in a wheelchair. But even under all the conditions that he's living under, his hand, his arm still looked a hundred times more alive than I am, you know? I was born this way. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it. So when you hire somebody and you're paying them $4,000 a month and they're talking about the evil of the white man and the rich white man going to Vegas and, you know, criticizing every little thing that has anything to do um, with where this country is at as far as those relations are concerned, like I could see it was just, you know, it was just, it was her, you know, it was her alarm. Her alarm would go off. Oh my God, he said, poke a hotness. Don't you know that? Or if I ever said Indian casino, you know, she quickly snapped me out of that one. I just, she taught me, she trained me to say tribal property, tribal property. You know, she taught me to be more sensitive and I'm okay with that. I don't, I don't want to insult um, the tribal people. You know, I mean, like I said, I have an indigenous fetish. Part of the reason that I'm just so in love with my girlfriend is because she looks indigenous. She, lo she looks like Pocahontas. She looks like Pocahontas, Pocahontas. You know, I mean, that's what I find attractive. I find uh, women of color attractive. That's just who I am. Uh, and then she's out there with these accusations and they're just so bizarre. I mean, before Mahi, I had a woman of color. And before that, there was another woman of color. It goes all the way back to Anne-Marie, really. She's not the worst. Um, before I was uh, with someone of my, you know, ilk. But this drama just continues and continues and continues. And she posted all of this nonsense. But the important thing is, is that all of that stuff is 18 or 19 months old. And I can't see it because I can't access, uh, nor do I even want to see it. You know, I don't even want to see it. When a Karen goes off, it's just like delete because she's in the middle of an amygdala breakdown. She's not, she's not logical right now. She's not sensical right now. She's threatened uh, by my existence. Somebody told me that she said that I moved to Vegas just to continue the harassment or whatever of her. I moved to Vegas because I'm nobody in New York, because I have no other career, because there's nowhere else that I can make, and I'll probably make $4,000 from TikTok this month and 1,000 from YouTube. There's no place else I can even make a dollar. Um, I can't work a regular job, and I go to Vegas, and I walk around, and this is what I hear all day long. Vegas, Paulie C. And I make people laugh, um, and I entertain people, and you know, I call out all of the hypocrisy that I see. I mean, I could start at the top of the strip at the stratosphere, and I'm probably gonna do this, and walk south, and hit the critical points, the critical problems, the serious problems, uh, the mismanagement in every casino. And there's casinos that are not at all mismanaged. And I'll run down the positive ones from the top down. I got nothing to say about the stratosphere. I got nothing to say about the Sahara except that their casino needs work. It needs, it needs a couple of rule changes. It needs a little more life. Okay, skip, skip. I got nothing to say about the win. I worship the win. Treasure Island and Phil Ruffin, he did a fantastic job, $750 million. Um, skip, you know. In other words, I can go down and 60, 70% of the properties blow my mind. 
you know, I always give uh, the MGM a B plus because it's very hard to run a corporation decently. And they run a corporation and I'm not pro corporation, but they run a corporation decently. They're decent people. Are they expensive on the food? Yes, but they're not ripping you off a sandwich and a coffee at Side Betty Cafe, a quality breakfast sandwich is $20. Is that expensive? Absolutely. But total garbage is $30 at Caesars. So therefore MGM, because the, the, the grading is so ridiculously skewed, gets a B plus. You know, you go down to the South Point, a guy like Michael Gorn, amazing. Jonathan Jossel at the Plaza, who's sort of, you know, talks to me. He gets it. He's a, you know, he's a star. I used to feel that way about the El Cortez until they started hosting you know who. And now what do I do with that? You know, I, I, I actually told Adam, Adam, you're a star, you know? I really felt that way. When I meet people that are way better than me at a job, like Adam, like Jonathan, <clears throat> like every single person who works at the Win Encore, I'm okay with that. I, I'm like, wow, you know? When I meet people from the live uh, and they're 100 millionaires or billionaires. And I'm not bragging. I mean, I've met billionaires. Well, I mean, I think they're billionaires. Uh, they would have to tell me, but they're certainly 100 millionaires. <clears throat> I don't have any anger. It's like, I'm a broken toy. I know exactly what I did wrong my entire life to end up 59 and, you know, pretty much broke. Um, I know what I did and I'm, I'm not angry about it. I talk to my friends that are successful and I tell them, you don't know what it's like to, um, you know, only be able to plan for the next month, for the next two months. They're planning for when, I was just talking to a guy this morning and he's planning for when he's 90 years old. God bless him. I'll, I almost certainly will be living in a trailer in North Carolina and there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing I really fear, I don't fear not eating. The only thing I fear is my teeth because my teeth are all fake. Uh, and they need a lot of work, see? They're all fake and they need a lot of work to maintain. So I do fear my teeth because my teeth have been ridiculously expensive over the last year or two um, to maintain a mouthful of fake teeth. When you get old, who knew? I wouldn't have done it. But then again, what am I gonna do? walk around with all yellow fangs on top of everything else I gotta deal with? So I don't know how many people are gonna watch this, but this is a heartfelt um, moment for me because I've been dealing with a lot of adversity over the last couple of days. And listen, <clears throat> all of my own making, you know? I could have moved out to Vegas and <clears throat> pretended she didn't exist, I guess. I could pretend that what's going on at the Fontainebleau isn't going on, I guess. I could pretend that Resorts World is a, knows what they're doing and is a big success, I guess. Or I could be me. I'm gonna choose me every single time. I don't care if I lose every one of my followers and I love you guys. But if you have to leave me for one reason or another, I understand, but I have to be me. Uh, and that's the way I'm gonna leave this. Vegas, Paulie C.